Okay, so for this video, we're going to talk about familiar theorem. How are we going to use this theorem in solving some of the problems in math? So first, what is remainder theorem? Remainder theorem states that when we divide a polynomial f of x by x minus c, the remainder is f of c. So how are we going to apply this? So here our first example is p of x, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x plus 3, and our divisor or the x minus c is x minus so, of course, to find the remainder, you are supposed to uh, apply remainder theorem. But by the way, if you don't want to apply remainder theorem, you may also use um, your previous um, topic about dividing polynomials. For in there, if you're going to use long division or synthetic division, you can still find the remainder. But of course, this is one of the recommendations recommendations also wherein you will be able to find the remainder easily because here in this problem you are not asked to find the quotient but rather the remainder only so better to use or apply remainder theorem so that you can easily get the remainder so basically how are you going to start finding the remainder of this without using synthetic division or long division so first we are going to use the same way we find the value of x based on the divisor given. So same with what we did with um, synthetic division last time. So here x minus 2 will be equal to 0 and then there we got x equals positive 2. And after that, we will just simply substitute the value of x in our polynomial here or the p of x so you will just simply change all the x's to 2 and there we go and after that of course you will apply already your scales in evaluating polynomials so of course in evaluating we are following always the pandas rule so we are going to start here in this case we are going to process the one with the exponent so the one with 2 raised to 3 2 raised to 2 so we do have positive 8 then 2 raised to 2 is 4 and right after that we cannot proceed with multiplication so multiplying we will have 4 times 4 will have 16 and then of course, after that, as you can see, we can now proceed with subtraction and addition and so on. If you can manage to um, evaluate this all together or one at a time, it's your choice. As long as you can follow the flow properly and you can manage doing the operations all together at a particular time. So here, so 8 minus 16, it's negative 8. Then I'll just simply copy the rest of the term. So I'll just do it one by one. And then negative 8 plus 10, you will have positive 2. Then combine with last 2 with 3, you will have p of 2 is equal to 5. Therefore, the remainder is 5. And that's it. You're done. It's easy, right? So okay, let's have another example. So, find again the remainder if this given polynomial is divided by x plus 1. So, of course, remainder theorem is the key. But, of course, if you want to check the remainder, if you got the correct answer, you may also use the synthetic division or long division. Okay, so first, of course, we should know what would be the value of x that we are supposed to substitute in the p of x or in the given polynomial. So here in this case, we are supposed to substitute negative 1. So we are going to plug in negative 1 or we are going to change all the x's in the p given by negative 1. So there we go. And we are going to start evaluating. So, starting from the terms with exponents. 
So, negative 1 raised to 3, it will be negative 1. So, by the way, don't forget, so negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So, we are going to multiply negative 1. 3, negative 1. So, based on our signs on integers, so if you are going to multiply 3, negative 1, that would be the answer is negative. So, negative 1. And negative 1 raised to 2. So, we all know if we are going to multiply negative with another negative, the answer will be positive. So, here. And right after that, we may now proceed with multiplication. So, we are going to multiply those terms we need to multiply. So, 8 times 1. So, we have here 8. And as you can see, the remaining operations here is addition and subtraction. You can already process this from left to right. So, we can have negative 8, I mean negative 1 added to 8. This will be positive 7. And I'll just simply copy the rest of the term. So, I'll just do it one by one. And next to that, I will add 7 with negative 17. I will be able to get negative 10. And combined with the last term, which is positive 10, I will be able to get 0. So, that means P of negative 1 is equal to 0. The remainder is 0. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you learn about remainder theorem. So, if you like this video and if you learn out of this video, please click like and subscribe now. Thank you.